Christmas! It's 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 Christmas! Oh wait, no it's not. Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people. Christmas is nearly here. Kinda. Sort of. I guess. And because of this fantastic holiday spirit, what better time for me to present to all of you my personal top 10 favourite snow levels in all of video gaming. Eh? Now this isn't really a Christmas themed list per se, and more just a Christmassy snowy themed list, which is a really good thing because when it comes to the UK, we really fucking deliver when it comes to snow. way, one game per franchise, and if the level has snow or ice or anything like that in it, it can qualify. Oh, and just a heads up, you better wrap yourselves up for this video because it's gonna get a little bit chilly. Oh, speaking of cold, oh, okay, sorry. Oh. My beard has been trimmed very slightly. I didn't see that coming. So, let's kick this list off with a proper kick. There we go. Number 10 on my list goes to Ice Paradise from Sonic Advance 2. The Game Boy Advance was the first Nintendo console I ever owned myself and properly grew up with, and Sonic Advance 2 was the first Sonic game I actually ever played because of that. At the time, and to this day, I love it. That game fucking rocks my jingle bells. Christmas ducks. The visuals, music, level design, absurd speeds making the platforming hard but fair except for this bloody stage all make this game a roaring good time to play. So good that I actually beat the final boss of this game while taking a shit one day. Gotta go fast indeed. Anyway, Ice Paradise is extremely memorable to me. It had solid platforming, not too heavy of a reliance on ice physics, and I always loved the detail in the background to make it feel more than just a blue and white icy level. The boss battle was pretty fun also, and the music always gets stuck in my head whenever I hear it. I may not be the biggest Sonic fan at all, but dang, I love this level and this game. Number nine goes to any stage in the Katamari series in which you have to build a snowman. Do you wanna build a snowman? No, I have to. Otherwise my dad will try to kill me. Seriously, look at him. I wish I could have fun, but look at him. Think next time before you knock, you insensitive bitch. I'm gonna stick with the Katamari Forever stage though, simply because it's the same stage as all the previous games, but in HD. If you've played the Katamari games, you'd understand that you have to roll stuff up to clean up after your idiot parents that just so happen to own the universe. I adore these games more than I can properly tell you right now, but that's for another video. So instead, let's talk about snow. The levels in which you literally have to roll up snow and of course, people, trees and buildings, I've always had a soft spot for because they're easily the most relaxed stages in a Katamari game. Get the right piece of J-pop music on and then rolling through the bizarre cardboardy towns with cozy warm colours striking against the cold and harsh snowy colours becomes extremely therapeutic. It also plays on my inner childhood dream of wanting to roll up a snowball as big as a radio tower, so it's all good in my books. I think I'll have to give number 8 to Frostbite Village from Spyro A Hero's Tale. Loads of people didn't like this game. Look at this fucking village though. This is easily one of the best looking snow levels on this list and it really helps it stay on the list with how fucking fun it is to explore and play through. Hello there. You must be spider. Great mini games, great design, superb visuals and the bouncy control all contribute to make this one of the best parts of the entire game. And the sheer amount of detail here I always found to be wondrous. It doesn't look just like a village covered in snow, it's a village within the snow, almost otherworldly. And I also love how your fiery breath stands out magnificently amongst the misty air, illuminating the cool yet saturated colours for a brief moment before fading back into the cold yet again. I like this level a lot. It has snow in it. <laughs> Number seven goes to Cool Cool Mountain. <laughs> no! No it doesn't! It goes to Snowman's Land. Cool Cool Mountain? M more like Fool Fool Mountain? Because you'd have to be a fool to put it in. I feel like I'm one of the only people to ever say this, but I always preferred Snowman's Land over Cool Cool Mountain in Mario 64. Am I alone on that? 
Well, I hope not. Whenever someone even says the word snow level, nine times out of ten, Cool Cool Mountain gets mentioned, and as far as I'm concerned, it's completely oversaturated, especially when I find Snowman's Land to be a simply more interesting level. The colours are more vibrant, the level design is more explorative, the different star challenges are much more varied and fun to solve, and not to mention, it's the only time in the whole game when crawling is 100% necessary. And then you find a huge igloo inside a tiny igloo that looks like it's straight up from Doctor Who! Basically, I just find Snowman's Land the more memorable level. Not to say that the mountain is bad in any way, far from it, it's a great level, but Snowman's Land was just a little bit more exciting for me. And it's snowing. Because it's a snow level. Ding dong, silent hill is here. The deathly screams are ringing. Dogs will bite you off the rear. The wheelchair wheels are spinning. Enough! We can have no more happiness. Simba! What? Oh, you, 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 yeah, why? Well, I see. You thought that the snow levels list would be full of happy, bouncy Emperor's new fucking groove snow levels? No. I want to make you unload all of your battles into your trousers. I can't not put Silent Hill's intro sequence on this list. It scarred me so much as a kid that it made me petrified of snow for a long time afterwards. Granted, it focuses more on the fog aspect than snow, but look. It's snow. Shut up. Like any great horror game, the presentation of this intro strikes fear on all accounts through the audio and the visuals, and it's one of the few snow levels that literally makes your room feel colder by the sheer sight of how helpless and harsh this whole area is. From the second you begin controlling Harry Mason, the snow starts a falling, and that is when you know shit is going down. How does something as joyful as a flurry of snow make you feel like that? I don't know, but Silent Hill found a way. I could go on about this intro all day, but there's no point. It may not be a level exactly, but the original Silent Hill definitely deserves mention for its sheer impact and imprinting on my mind, as well as portraying the more dangerous and hopeless side to snow that a lot of games don't seem to cover. More like Silent yeah. Chill, you know what I mean. <laughs> Merci everyone, au revoir. Hell yeah, Tombi 2! Not Tomba 2! Tomba sounds bloody stupid. This game, as a sequel, does a lot of things incredibly well, and it's one of the more solid sequels you will ever play in your life. Not necessarily better than the first, in my opinion, but pretty damn close. And one of the ways it did things differently, but surprisingly solidly, was the risky choice of having the game play out entirely in a 3D polygonal world, as opposed to 2D sprites amongst 3D backgrounds. It was a lot more ambitious than the first, for sure, but this risk, if you ask me, was seriously worth it, because even today, the game looks incredible and really holds up. And when when I was younger, my excitement peaked and my wonder flourished when I entered the Kujara Ranch area for the first time. Seeing Tombi shiver and then freeze up was an adorable design choice, and one that always stuck out to me. And when you have the gear to finally explore around, you'd find a truly brilliant midsection to the game with many hidey holes, extremely fun side quests, side areas with challenging missions, a secret slide, hidden cliff sides accessible from climbing to the peak of the pole, bird nests, and of course, the excellent soundtrack that got rammed into my head for hours after turning the game off. with the oh-so-satisfying crunch of your feet clambering through the snow, and you truly have a charismatic snow level with more than one surprise up its sleeve, despite how kind of small it is. But ah, you think it's all over, but then you find the second part of the ranch area, the ranch summit, where it's still snowy, but the enemies are more aggressive, the hidden areas are crazier, the jumps are more perilous, the music gets slightly more eerie, and it's the perfect, ominous, and foreshadowing cherry on the cake to the lovely snowy village you just comfortably explored only a second ago. Also, there is Santa. He has a super flying scooter. Fucking Santa. This game is great, and this level is great. Go, Tombi. Tomba. Tombi! <laughs> Number four is literally indescribable. Like, seriously, I can't even describe it. If ever you should play Animal Crossing New Leaf during January and February, and if you're lucky enough to catch some precipitation, it will be snow. And whenever it starts slowly falling, pairing that with the utterly immersive and incredible soundtrack of this game literally makes me feel warm and tingly inside, like a child that sees snow for the very first time. It's almost like a nostalgic feeling, even though this is actually the first and only Animal Crossing game I've ever played, but it just makes me feel like it's taking me back to my past where I've seen something that I ha haven't actually seen. Like I said, it's indescribable. Whenever the sky goes deep grey and snow starts to slowly fall in New Leaf and you see it gracefully and slowly envelop your perfect little town, 
It's truly magical. I, I'm not even joking. I'm, I'm crying. Oh my good god, Crash Bandicoot, you horny little trollop. I thought that hog was good enough for your cravings, but no, your hunger for animal booty knows no limits. <laughs> Crash 2 is awesome. It also has a few snow levels. My favorite snow level though is Bear It, otherwise known as Stage 8, purely because when I first played the demo for this game, this was the only stage I could actually try. And boy, did I try it over and over again. This level has fucking everything. Snow, ice, icy water, statues, seals, whales, death animations involving pants, super fast baby polar bears, this is easily the most hyperactive and batshit insane level on this list so far. Okay, it may not be as fast as Ice Paradise, but the music is better, the environment is cooler, and the control and box breaking is just so much more goddamn satisfying. From the second you mount the baby polar bear, the snow starts dropping, and then you're plonked into one of the most fun and thrilling levels in the entire game. And not only does it work great as a starter level for those not familiar with Crash's riding habits, but it also provides a great challenge for those trying to grab the gem, or for those just trying to go as fast as possible. The weight and control of the polar bear is also damn drop dead perfect, and and matching that up with the excellent music makes this entire experience worth every penny that you put into the game. Okay, it isn't the longest stage in the world by any means, and it feels like you find yourself being flung to the exit only a few moments after starting the level, but surely that's a good sign of how entertaining it is, right? Making time fly by? It doesn't matter either way, I find myself replaying this level constantly, and it was a great demo disc inclusion, I must say. <laughs> Let's get real here. Number two goes to fucking Shovel Knight and the level known as Stranded Ship. There's more ice in this stage than snow to be fair, but it's far too fucking awesome not to include it. This is one of the few instances where ice physics in a level seriously just didn't bother me because they weren't over the top and it didn't exploit those physics as the only new obstacle the stage has to offer since there are obviously the new enemies, new platforming challenges to earn treasure and perfect amounts of new difficulty increments to remind you that you are at the halfway point of your epic quest. Also, what the fuck is that thing? I don't know, but it's awesome. It throws up rainbows you can run across, I mean not to mention you can also require the Warhorn in this stage, undoubtedly for me the most useful and incredibly satisfying item to use in the whole game. The music is fucking brilliant and those backgrounds and sprites, my goodness, on 3DS especially not one single detail gets left behind in every layer of this gorgeously coloured icy plane. And let's not forget that it isn't just the outdoors being focused on, it does have a stranded ship, so the ice makes its way into the creepy rickety wooden decks and deathly spiked floors as well. And to top it all off you get a pretty badass boss battle at the very end of the stage from a character that used to be friends with you. One might say that it's the icing on the cake. <sighs> Okay, I have to admit, number one was basically already decided by me the very second I started writing this script. It's kind of a bit of a cheat, I suppose, but basically whenever you see any kind of snowy portion of the game in Uncharted 2, it does not fuck around. The main game itself is mostly flashbacks, but whenever you come back to the present day where you see where Nate ends up by the last part of his epic journey, you are literally on the edge of your seat for every part of it. No joke, the Uncharted 2 hanging train trailer itself is one of the single greatest trailers I have ever seen, and the fact that you find out it actually acts as the in intro for the game just blew my mind when I first played it. I was intrigued, confused, disorientated, invested, fighting for my life, scared shitless of the rusty train falling to pieces as I climbed it, and most of all, I could feel the icy breeze here more than any other snow level on this list. After you climb the train, you're then simply let loose to explore, bleeding and exhausted, and then later on you get attacked by mercenaries in the distance with no clear vision, no epic arsenal, and poor little Nate freezing up with each passing second. Silent Hill may have explored the mystery and danger of snow, but Uncharted 2 explored the worst worst case scenario of too much snow, and it made snow the worst fucking natural occurrence you could ever find yourself stuck in. Let's be honest, if the intro scene in every other occurring snow scene in the game was simply set on a jungle cliffside for instance, it simply would not have been as effective. I mean, tell me that isn't terrifying. You can't see how high that is, what's in the distance, what's below you, or hell, what's even above you. It makes you feel more helpless and alone, scared of the unknown, and feeling completely lost and afraid in this endless void of ice, snow, and harsh mountain mist. I'll never forget these parts of the game, ever. Hell, I'll never forget Uncharted 2. And just look at that cover for the game. You you want to buy it right now, don't you? It's lovely, isn't it? Wait a sec, wait a wait a second. Snow? But but Crash 2. But Crash 2 has snow in the background of the game box. Wait. Uncharted 1's box is in the jungle, and so is Crash 1. Oh god, this is freaky. Okay, Crash 3's box is set in an Egyptian desert, so could it be that Uncharted 3 is set in a desert? <gasps> My god, this can't be a coincidence. 
Naughty dog, you clever, clever, naughty doggy bastards. Wait a second, let's think about this instead. Crash had three games before becoming a kart racer, all developed by Naughty Dog. And Jack and Daxter had three games before becoming a kart racer, all developed by Naughty Dog. So does that mean that Uncharted 4... Yep, it's uncarted, isn't it? I cracked the case. There is a god, everyone. I've confirmed it. Thank you very much. And there you have it, everyone. My top 10 personal favorite snow levels in video games. I hope you enjoyed this video. And please, as always, leave your thoughts in the comment section because I had to cut a lot of snow levels out. So I want to hear all of your opinions on your favorite snow levels. And so please, let's have just a moment of silence for my personal favorite snow levels that couldn't make the cut for this list. My apologies. Go to Wave Escape 3, Tearaway Tomb Raider, MGS1, Sly Cooper 4, Gex 3, and Twilight Princess, amongst many others. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. If it is Christmas while you're watching this video today, then Merry frickin' Christmas to you, or any other holidays that you celebrate. So happy frickin' holidays to you if you're watching in a holiday, and please remember to stay beautiful, I guess. Claus, I, I was I was just joking last weekend. I wasn't really going to kill anybody if you didn't get me smashed by this. I'm very sorry, so can I please have it now? Oh, well, if you change your mind about this whole thing, can I please have Dragon Age Inquisition instead? It, it looks really good, like your beard in your suit. It goes together so perfectly. You can put me on your naughty list if you want to. Hey there everyone, hope you enjoyed the video and I'd just like to let you know that I'll be running a three week competition on Games Grabber to give all of you a chance to win my personal Christmas list games. The winner of last week's Super Smash Bros Wii U contest was Canimus Prime, so well done to you. Games Grabber will be in touch with you very shortly. And this week, my pick for you all to try and win is Dragon Age Inquisition on any system of your choice. That's any next gen console or PC. And to win a copy of the game, all you have to do is sign up to Games Grabber and then invite as many friends as possible to also sign up with the unique Earl on the site, and the one that invites the most people gets the game, who I will then announce in the next video. Check the description for all the relative links about the competition and the terms and conditions to make sure you're all not cheating, and best of luck to you all. Thanks so much for watching my Christmas special for 2014, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, then please consider leaving me a little like because it helps me out a huge amount, and if you want to subscribe, that would be awesome as well. I upload one video every single Sunday. Uh, check the description for all of my social media links and everything so you can keep following up with what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm also going to take this time to give a huge thank you to uh, my top um, Patreon supporters. So, um, you guys, thank you so much. Um, Nicole Gunara, Tony Pierce, Mohamed Al Sali, Greg Black, Abdullah Almana, Brad Bird, Tamaxco, Ahmed Al Mutawa, and Alan Angert. Thank you so much, all of you guys, and thank everybody at home for watching this video. And if it's your birthday today or watching this video, then happy freaking birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful.